I want to bring in Fox News senior judicial analyst right now, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, good to see you. Good morning. So you heard Miller really lay out the options. What's your take on the president's next move? I've been uh, arguing that the best thing the president can do is to rescind the executive order and write a new one. This is not legislation that the government is stuck with, that the Congress has written, that the government has a job to defend. This is the president's own creation, and he can modify it. So take the Ninth Circuit decision which is probably the most liberal slash anti-Trump decision he would have gotten from any court of that level at that level in the country. And look at all of the areas that they found problematic and shore those areas up. Sort of like what, you, what um, Senator Lindsey Graham just suggested. Craft what lawyers call and judges call, I'm smiling because I used to have to do this as a trial judge to avoid attacks from the appellate court, hmm. make it bulletproof. Make it so that it still serves the, the security needs of the country, but, but accommodates the concerns that the, that the judiciary has. This will also confound his enemies. We're talking about the case in Seattle, appealed to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. That's one of 48 lawsuits filed in 48 different federal courts against him. As soon as he rescinds the executive order, Attorney General Sessions sends Justice Department lawyers to each of those 48 uh, courts and has the lawsuits dismissed. We're back at square one. Why do you think it wasn't bulletproof from the get-go? I mean, President Trump himself last Friday suggested that a new executive order on the travel ban would be released this week. He, he actually did suggest this. If they are insisting that the original order was within the president's legal rights, what changes? Well, I think he's getting a lot of advice from a lot of people, not necessarily me, but even people in the administration. You know, he has an attorney general now. Uh, the attorney general <coughs> has what's called the Office of Legal Counsel, which is the best and the brightest in the, just, in the Justice Department. Uh, people extremely learned in the law and the Constitution who are advising him. Well, there were some holes in the original one. It was probably written before he was president, which means it was probably written by people not in the government, not necessarily accustomed. And he didn't have his AG. Correct. He didn't have his team around him. We know correct, that. Correct. Now he does have a team of people that can make this bulletproof. So why should he do it? Because he can accomplish two goals. He can accomplish the goal he promised the American people he would pursue security at the borders, a personal passion with him, one of the reasons he was elected president. Second goal is he can do it in a way that it will survive judicial scrutiny. Because what good is it if the courts are going to keep undoing it? Right. Judge, I want to ask, where would you think that the main changes would be made, though? Because the issue of standing, which is one of the places that's received the most criticism for those states, that's just out there now, right? So now a state, a state can sue under this. And on the religious discrimination side of things, I thought the Ninth, Circuit, uh, Ninth Circuit's opinion was flimsy, but they can still project that forward. If they you can. have Muslim-majority countries that are singled out, any number of them in any context, it seems that another court would just say, well, you're doing the same thing again. So how do they get around those two major hurdles? Okay, so there's a couple hurdles there. It's a great question. The, the, the Supreme Court in areas of race and religion has looked at, at legislation and executive orders two ways. What is the purpose? What is the effect? The purpose can be benign. The purpose can be protection of everybody. But if the effect falls disproportionately on one race or one religion, then the court will invalidate it. Not with immigration. The court has only used purpose and effect with school desegregation, uh, voter ID and uh, congressional uh, district borders. It has not taken the purpose effect uh, distinction into immigration for this reason. Immigration is foreign policy. Foreign policy is reposed in the president, not in the Congress, but in the president. And one of the tools given to the president by the Congress is the ability to suspend anybody's immigration, which leads us to the second question. Should the president have to prove to the satisfaction of a court that the decision to exclude people from seven countries was a wise and prudent and evidence-based decision? Answer, no. He shouldn't have to prove that. But if he does prove it, if he can show why these countries are dangerous, it's bulletproof. The court, there's nothing the courts can do. Well, uh, look, how about the number of refugees that have entered this country just since February 3rd? I think this is worthwhile looking at just because ISIS has already indicated we have a passport machine, we are going to infiltrate the refugee flow, and just since February 3rd, an enormous number of people have come just from those seven countries. Well, Donald Trump just didn't pick those seven countries out of the air. Right. He got guidance and advice, some of which is probably top secret and he doesn't want to reveal it, 
uh, that that supported his decision. So they should reveal what they can without revealing more than they need to reveal, without revealing method. You know, the and the Obama administration I. singled out these countries so, previously yeah. as well. Exactly. As you know. So exactly. that's worth. That's worth One, one of the judges too. said, "Where did he get the seven countries from? Are they the same as the Obama administration?" The answer to the second part of that question is yes. The answer to the first part of the question is that's not an appropriate judicial inquiry. Mm -hmm. This is not a trial. The president doesn't have to prove his case. The authority was given to him on his own to choose what countries he wants to suspend. So what is the role of the court here then? It's an interesting question. The role of the court to is to say down, what the down. Constitution means and what the law means. But when the court projects, as you mentioned earlier, and as Stephen Miller was railing against yesterday, when the court projects its own politics onto the president and uses that as a means to stifle uh, the president, that's not the proper role. And Judge, we talked about this during the break, the fact that you know, a lot of people are saying, well, we can't criticize these judges, and these justices, you know, they are completely above, you know, they're, they're totally objective. That's not necessarily the case, right? Once they put on this robe, as you said so, so beautifully, something changes, right? Well, well, when you we criticize when judges you all the time, by no, the way. No, we criticize judges all the time. We should right, right, but a lot of people are so. saying, "Oh no, you can't possibly." Well, right? There's a lot, okay. of, a lot of so criticism. It's Here, here's criticism. the reason yeah. I say you can't because judges can't answer. Mm -hmm. That's why you criticize the president, and he can he can get back at you. He can do a, hold a press conference, or he can use his his Twitter device. Judges are not allowed to enter the public fray other than by the decisions they make in their courtroom. But of course they can be criticized. But I can tell you something happens when you put a black robe on and have a lifetime appointment, as I once did. You basically don't care about the political forces that got you there, and you do what you think is the right thing to do. But in return for lifetime tenure, you have to exercise a certain level of judicial modesty, mm. of intellectual honesty. And as Judge Gorsuch said the other day, often producing an end with which you don't agree yeah. right. as long as the right. means are consistent so with the Constitution.